What's up, y'all? Welcome to the trenches. Today we got an IE legend, a UCLA alumni, and current Green Bay Packers, Kenny Clark. What up? What's up, man? Man, first question I gotta ask is, your brother, I always see him on Snapchat, Instagram, always talking about a honey meal this, a honey meal that. Where did that honey meal come from? Uh, it's just a, you know, a little slogan that we all made up. Um, just Hundred mil to us is just you know striving for your for your best. So that's, you know what I'm saying whatever that is. Is so. that what you're chasing right now? That, that hundred mil? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I got to get to that hundred <laughs> mil. I mean, uh, you see it. You know, you see it everywhere. You know, Instagram. Mm -hmm. or when we just talking to each other. You know, we talk. To, we tell our moms that hundred mil. Like, <laughs> like, you know, it's just something that you know we constantly just remind each other and, and tell each other. You know, hundred mil is just striving for for your best, whatever oh. your hundred mil is. Okay. Now, did you have, did that start like at a UCLA or more when you already got to college? Uh, I mean, when you got to the league? It started more when I got to the league. Okay. Um, honestly, it started probably like two years ago. Like, like he just come back from school. <laughs> he he crazy. School, he could, yeah, he come back and he just make up something. <laughs> and if it sounds good, we all run with it. So, you know how that go. Okay. So why did you choose UCLA? Uh, first off, um, just with the coaches, I felt like they were genuine guys. Um, the, they were all NFL experienced guys. Um, majority of them uh, either coached or played in the NFL. Um, and it was close to home. UCLA was close to home. Uh, and um, when I was, my dad was in prison. So when I was, uh, a lot of coaches were saying that they were going to go see my dad. And, um, oh, okay and go visit them in prison and they were the only like school that did that that actually kept their word so just thought it was just they were just genuine people really cool people some love for and, you huh? yeah really asked some love for me so if you don't mind me asking like what what's a little background like about your dad's situation uh really i mean he just you know he in prison right now and um you know just working through it mm -hmm. and uh you know we working through it as a family trying to get him up out of there so you think that some of your motivation come from the situation that you see your dad in? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, just I mean, I think my whole life story, just how how I grown up and mm -hmm. um, just everything that I've been through, um, just is what motivate me to to be where I'm at today. Yeah. Just you know, every position and um, every card I was dealt with, you know, you know, since I was you know born, and um, I think that you know that's what make me you know who I am and. Uh, make me a leader and, and all that kind of stuff in my family. Man, that's dope. How do you feel about college players getting paid off their likeness? Uh, I think it, I think it, it's going to do it's going that that do good for the sport. <laughs> um, that I think that'd be pretty cool. D did you struggle in college? I struggled. Yeah, yeah. I, I struggled in college financially. Um, it was it was tough. I mean, you know, you got your little. Twin beds, the, twi the, yeah, the, the twin long beds. Yeah, the uh, uh, twin XL. The, yeah, the twin XLs. Uh, and I mean, that's really it. You got your, you know, your dining, it was the dining table or whatever mm -hmm. it's called, the uh, tra training table, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you got all that, but um, I definitely think like, you know, having kids, I mean, the school's making money off of the kids and, so and nice. all that kind of stuff. And they bring in a lot of revenue uh, to schools and that's how, that's how a lot of schools, um, I mean, that's how a lot of sports, you know, survive is by, you know, football players and, and basketball players and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, those sports and the school is making money off of other why kids. Not why not, you why know, not chip the jits? So. Yeah, give some kids some money. Um, do you think a <laughs> lineman will really be able to go create a brand for itself? Because, like, the quarterbacks and receivers, you know, a lot of times when they get to college, they yeah. already really have that platform. Do you think linemen really have a chance, or you got any advice for some linemen that's trying to cr create a brand for themselves? It's it's tough. Um, I mean, you see it, you see it in every, I mean, in every uh, sport and every and everything you do. I mean, like the the bigger guys don't really get that get that love that mm -hmm. uh, you know quarterback or receiver or somebody would. Uh, you know, it's something that I fight. I, I I still fight. You know, what I'm saying through. Uh, if you ain't, you know, a big name or uh, a guy that got a thousand sacks or or if you're not, I mean, or got a thousand receiving yards, mm -hmm. you're not really going to get much. And, you know, I, I just signed my, you know, my deal and all that kind of stuff. And they, they still don't care. So, um, you know, it's it's just different, you know, just different stuff that that uh, guys got to fight through. Um, but I do think like 
you can't make your your brand as a as a bigger guy mm-hmm. as a lineman. Um, just depends on you know the opportunities that's that's handed to you, and um, you know how much you you willing to go you know put yourself out there mm-hmm. you know as far as the media, um, and now to go do other stuff. But so you think at the place you at right now, you still feel like you struggle from some of that. Lyman yeah. not getting no love. Yeah, 100%. What? They not going to believe that. Like, <laughs> it's, like, I'm, and I'm talking more about, like, you know, Nike, Adidas. Mm. And, um, you but you're on that bigger level, so that's who you, yeah, that's who you, you know, target. That's, that's where, you, you know, you want to, that's where, that's where you trying to, you trying to, you target trying to, yourself yeah, to. your energy to, and yep. it's like, you still not, like, you talk to those people, you still not there to them, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, so it's like, even though um, you didn't, went up into your profession and career, you still battling that. It's just on a different level. It's just on a different level. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So big, I mean, bigger guys, it's a lot of, you know, bigger guys and linemen that do, you know, had a bad brand. Mm-hmm. But um, like a guy like me, like, I'm not, I'm not all out on the, on, <laughs> on the media, NFL network, you know, here and there. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm quiet, I'm chill, I'm laid mm-hmm. back, you know, I just chill with the family on the, in the off season and stuff. So. Um, you know, a lot of people do do that though. So yeah. it just all depend on you know how you go about you know your business in the off season and what you're doing. Okay, so it's off season now. What do you like to do in the off season? Man, I'm majority of the time I'm chilling, chilling. Uh, <laughs> playing the game. Uh, I got a baby on the way, so congrats. Uh, yeah, appreciate it, man. Congrats. I'm just you know handling that. And you want a boy uh, or a girl? Huh? A boy or a girl? I'm, a, I'm having a girl. Ah! So I wanted I wanted a boy. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm having a girl. Okay, so. congrats. That's dope. Yeah, it's pretty dope. What was your <laughs> biggest motivator in college? In college? Uh, biggest motivator in college? Probably just making it to the league, to really. League. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, that, that's, re- that's the reason why I went to UCLA was the coaches was NFL experienced coaches, good guys, and then, you know, I was like, like, yeah, this is my whole number one goal to go to the league, so okay. they're they gonna put me in, in the in the best position to get there. And um, and I knew I was gonna be able to start early and all that kind of stuff. So I was just like, yeah, this this the best you know situation for me. Okay. And then when you got to the league, what do you think was your biggest motivator then? Uh, when I got to the league, motiv- getting motivated. I mean, being motivated. Uh, just I don't know. I, I, I'm more. I'm one of them guys that be focused on like the process. Um, so just you know, being being this the best that I can be. Yeah. Um, you know, come in, and on top of that, coming out, just proving people wrong, coming out, um, getting drafted. Mm-hmm. Everybody was. Everybody didn't really understand. You know, when I got drafted, like, you know, usually everybody is like. Um, uh, like, you know, we happy we got this guy and uh, he gonna fit into our system. When I got drafted, everybody was like, oh, we should have picked this guy, we should have picked <laughs> oh, that guy. Oh, and you seeing all of it. Yeah, I'm seeing all Like, I, you know, this is the first day I'm, I'm a Packer. <laughs> you feel me? And it's like, <laughs> uh, Madden ratings came out. I was the, I was the last, I was like the lowest rated rookie. I was, uh, well, I was the lowest rated rookie. It's a couple second round rounders had higher had higher ratings than me. On the, on your same team? Nah, just just, uh, just, just throughout the just league. Just throughout the league, and um, I mean that didn't, that didn't like motivate me, but it was just like it added something. Like, to it you. just it just added like, some more why y'all stuff. Trying like, damn, like yeah, like, <laughs> like y'all must think I'm just you know that just week. trash or just <laughs> weak. You feel me? So uh, that's just where I was at with it. Just, okay, just trying to prove everybody wrong and um, you know proving that. I was gonna be, you know, a leader, you know, for that franchise and help them win. Okay, so you brought up draft day. How does it feel to be a first round draft pick? Like I know that probably had yeah. to be like a, a dream come true. Like describe that feeling to me, like when your uh, name was called, like what honestly, was going on? Honestly, it's a, it's it's crazy. Like, you know, you it's a stressful day, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like just, you know, from the morning all the way to when you get picked, it's just stressful, you know, and did you know you were gonna get caught on the first one? No, nah, I didn't. Like my mom told me, like we got a um, a hall in San Bernardino, mm-hmm. and um, my mom was like, like, I told my mom, like I, I need a, we need a, the hall for two days just in case I go second round. Cause uh. all my interviews, I had, I had some, like I had the Packers. That was my first interview. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the Cardinals at the time and the Redskins, they were like picking like later later on in the first round. Mm-hmm. So I'm th- I, I got I kind of got like a good idea like where I'm gonna go. Yeah. And then um, the rest of my interviews was like guys that were you know second round I mean second round teams that were going uh, the, the, the beginning of the second round mm-hmm. team. So I was thinking I was gonna go anywhere from the end of the first to the to the to the yeah, second yes. early second. Okay. So. I told my mom, like, just in case I go early second, like, I need to, you know, I, we need to uh, have this haul. She was like, nah, you're going to go first round. So I'm like, all right. And she put that on you? Yeah, she put it on me. And, um, when they called your yeah, name. Yeah, they called my name, man. It was just, it was amazing. It was amazing. I didn't know, you know, what to say. I, all, all I could say was just thank you and mm-hmm. appreciate the opportunity. And, um, you know, it was, just, it was really just a blessing. Man, I Did you cry? No, nah, I didn't cry. Ah. Nah. Nah, it'd be tough for me. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't be really getting too excited about stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that was an exciting day and everything, but I don't be really like getting like, I don't know, like super emotional about okay. stuff. But um, yeah, it definitely was that. That was like one of the best days of my life. Really. Okay. So now that you've been in the, um, the league for a few years now, what's some advice that you would give to maybe even some high school or some college guys that's about to come to the league, like some game that you wish that you would have had early on? Um, I would say just don't take nothing for granted. Like the league is like, the thing I love about the league is like, it don't matter how good or how great you are, Mm -hmm. like it's gonna always humble you. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like like you have four great games, Mm -hmm. like, and some like, and you, you sleep on the wrong person, he can be, he can not be up to your talent, but you sleep on the wrong person and they gonna make you look bad. Like, they can make you look bad. And like, that's the thing that I love about it. It's like, in the league, it's like, if you're not putting in like the work every week, it's gonna show. Like, if, you, if you're not, and, and that's from like, just the top guys, you know what I'm saying? If you're not, you're not in there every day or, or you're not taking it serious, like it's few guys that, that just got that ability to just, just don't have to do nothing. Don't have to do nothing and can wake up and play football. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not putting in that work every day and and get to it every week, mm-hmm. it's it's gonna show. You know what I'm saying? That's what I love about. It. That's the challenge of it. It's like being able to like have a good game mm-hmm. or even have to having a bad game, and then being able to reset reset uh, each and every week and then go out and, and try to do that again and prove mm-hmm. yourself again. You know what I'm saying? And then and then like. In my situation, me getting paid, I'm like highest paid nose tackle, all this stuff. Like now everybody is like, they, like you getting everybody best now, like, cause, cause you the, you the, you target. the, you, you the target, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it always, it, like, like me getting paid, you know, you feel good and all that kind of stuff, but it always, it, like, it NFL it. always find a way to mm. be like, nah, like, like keep putting in that work, keep doing <laughs> what you're doing, or you're going to be out here looking bad, you know mm. what I'm saying? So. Who is the most difficult offensive lineman you went against? You went against most difficult. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably say, uh, like my second year, I thought like the one of the best players in the league was Alex Mack, the center from the uh, from the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a great player. Uh, you know, Jason Kelsey, uh, Cowboys offensive line yep. too, uh, with Zach Martin and and Frederick. Those are great guys, great players. Uh, Sheriff from uh, the Redskins, great player. Um, but like really with Alex Mack, he was just, just um, was it fast and physical with it. Physical and he can, he just like a little gnat on you. Like, you know, you know, you get One off of him a that stay on you. Just, he always just, got a hand just, on you. Just still. because, just because <laughs> you, like, you run into the ball, he just he running with you. Like my guy ain't gonna make the tackle. My guy ain't gonna be close to the ball. Mm-hmm. So his effort makes it cold. Yeah, his effort just you know what I'm saying. His it's, it's, it's I feel like it's a mentality. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. You know, like yo, like whoever I'm lined up against, whoever lined up on he me, going to like that, he ain't yeah, he ain't, <laughs> he ain't making a play or he ain't you know. That's you know, I remember like I remember that my second year. I was like man, like that's what like like how he how he played and what he did. I'm like yeah, like like. He made yeah. you want to do a little oh, yeah, more. I, yeah, he made me like look back. Like, <laughs> I, I need to play with more effort. I need to do more stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I give him credit like for that. Like, okay. I'd be like, man, like he the one that was like, I was like damn, <laughs> like his effort is crazy. Like to the ball every play. Like, okay. Uh, 
best sack that you got? Or most like most uh, memorable best sack? sack. Most memorable. Um, damn, uh, I would probably say. I think I know what it is. That Brady thing. I mean that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that. I mean that one was good. But which I, one I, you was about to say? I'll probably say uh, when we when we played the. Nah, that was some good ones though. <laughs> one like you got you don't have any game balls from one of them big sack games or anything. Yeah, I got yeah. I, 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 you probably, probably gonna tell we, your we, son we about it. Like, we played the Vikings. Mm-hmm. We played the Vikings. It was like it was Monday Night Football, mm-hmm. and um, just like we kind of we had like our new coach and everything. We won a division that day, um, and it was a big game to win the division, to go to playoffs, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And uh, I had like two sacks, and like they was like. That was like some good moves. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I beat him, man. And as soon as you hit it, you knew yeah, it was I money time. Uh, yeah, I knew it was good. <laughs> I was tight. free. I was good. Being in the league, I know a lot of people see the game days. You see a couple occasional practice photos. Like, describe like a day for you, so you, people can really understand okay. like like yeah. what really go on. Uh, really, you know, you up at six. Um, got it. Well. Nowadays, like with the COVID and everything, we got we got testing in the morning. Mm. Um, then you walk in the building, you gotta get you gotta, you gotta get your, your temperature. You gotta get your, like your head scan on this little thing. Um, they give us like these watches, look like an Apple Watch, like mm. these tracker bracelets. Um, we walk around the building with those every day. Uh, you know, get breakfast, uh, get a workout in the morning. Got practice. I mean, then we got meetings. Uh, practice around like 11, 12, finish practice around probably two, mm-hmm. uh, and then meetings again, and then, um, you know, ice tub or whatever, and uh, head back to the house. And usually I, I, after, you know, I ice tub and stuff at the facility, I usually go get dry needled or uh, some type of, you know, some type of, you know, therapy, you mm-hmm. know, so I can, you know, get my body right for, for the week. Um, and you know, or, or massages or whatever day I got, you know, got all that stuff. But um, that's usually like our long days, so just, you know, all that stuff, you know, get dry needle and at the end of the day, I'll probably get back home like seven. Probably, yeah. So from six to seven. Yeah, six to seven. On, on a Thursday, a long day, six to seven mm-hmm. for sure, yeah. Okay, so you talked a little bit about taking care of your body. Is there any ways that you were able to take care of your money? Like what are some interesting ways that you've been able to manage your money? Man. Just listen to to the people that that the people that you got around you. Mm-hmm. Like like when you interview these people and and you got these people working for you and you understand that they work for you mm-hmm. and you know what's going on. You know with everything that's that that that's going on with mm-hmm. your money. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like my financial advisor, my financial advisor, he's a great dude, uh, a guy that that that. That don't want me to spend nothing, really. Like he got that mentality. Mm-hmm. And then um, my mom, you know, she 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 works uh, hand in hand with him, and um, she keeps him in line. So double checking, yeah, huh? double checking. <laughs> like, we got everything just you know on lock. Like, every shit. And you know, it's people that I trust. You know what I'm saying? So um, you know, I let them you know do their job and handle it. And it's something that that I learn. I learn more and more about you know every month, every year. And, um, you know, I just let, you know, the people that I trust just, you know, deal with it, do their thing. Okay, are you, do you have any active investments right now? You know, like a big thing right now for people is investments and real estate and things yeah. like that. You have any active or any, some that you're aspiring, aspiring to go do soon? Yeah, I just, uh, just invested in some water, some water, uh, with path water. Okay. Uh, I just, I'm about to try to do these, these, this school <laughs> and, uh, you know, gym facility, yep. compound kind Hello. of deals. Hello. Try, trying to get into, <laughs> get into that for sure. Um, and, you know, uh, real estate, get into that, um, get more into that. Um, you know, just with everything that just happened in the, in the last, you know, couple of months with the contract and everything, uh, this really been my first opportunity to really go dig know, in the bag. Dig into it. that. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, this is my chance to. You know, start learning more about what to invest in, what not to, and um, you know how to just make my money work for me. Okay, so 
when you seen those numbers on that paper, like, how did that feel to you? Man, I, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> they, they, like, they, they brought me in to like, they brought me in to sign my contract. Mm -hmm. And I, I swear, I, I, I was shaking. I, I was, I was shaking his hand, and I was shaking, man. Like, I didn't know what to, I, I didn't know what to say. Like, I just kept telling him, you know, thank you, appreciate you. <laughs> but I, I, all I remember all right. is, like, my coach, like, he hugged me. And, like, I, I, I was literally, like, shaking. Like, <laughs> like, damn, like, this real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's life-changing, you feel me? Yeah, like, I'm already knowing. You know, you go first round, you know, you get a lot of money and all that kind of stuff. But, it ain't like, the same. that second contract, like, you just, you know, you work hard for that. Like, you know what I'm saying? You off-seasons. Um, you know, all the work that I do in the off season and um, the therapy, staying, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of people don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't don't take it serious. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even in the league? Even in the league. A lot of people don't. So, like, and that's, and, and like I said, that's what, that's what, that's what make people, that's the difference. So, like, um, I just, you know, I was just like, man, like, this is, this is huge, like all that hard work, you know, paid off. Like it's crazy. Man, that's super dope. If you wasn't playing football, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Man, uh, I honestly do not know, man. I, I'll be doing something with kids. Think so? Yeah, I know I'll be doing something with kids. That's dope. Uh, some type of training, some type of something. Like, but I really don't see like in my life, you know, without sports, like, you know what I'm saying? I, some way you're going to be involved. Some way I'm going to be involved in like some type of sport, mm -hmm. you know, helping kids out, you know, helping them develop and, um, you know, become great men and, and great players, you know what I'm saying? Man, bro, I appreciate you coming on. Oh, yeah, appreciate for you sure. coming to talk to me. Um, Kendi Clark, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the trenches.